so we in the Growth Academy, um, what we've actually done is we've created a small video that explains what it is that we do. And this is a, it's an initiative that uh, Elizabeth came up with as a kind of a way of trying to promote uh, club growth within the district, because um, we find that it's, it's a little bit frustrating that you, you might add 20 clubs, but you might lose 10 in the same year. And, uh, and so, you know, the net effect is that you've only added 10. And obviously COVID has been very difficult um, and a lot of clubs have come under a huge amount of pressure. So uh, Elizabeth asked me to head up and uh, this. And uh, so we've put together a great team. Um, we look after new club growth. We're trying to, Maria here tries to um, sort of help clubs to, to, to charter and to get started. And then on the other side, we have got Sue, who isn't here yet, but she'll, I'm sure she'll join us shortly. And she looks at existing clubs and um, what can they do to improve, um, to, to recruit more members or to retain the members that they've got. And sometimes just the way in which you have meetings and you hold meetings and the agenda that you have, that can actually have an impact on whether members want to kind of continue to stay in your club and whatever. So those are the things. And I think um, what I'll do is rather than eat into too much time, I'm going to play the video that we have created. And this will allow us to just explain what it is that um, we do here. So, Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, my name is Gavin Gallagher and I have the honor of being the chairperson of the District 71 Growth Academy. In this short video, I'm going to explain what it is the Growth Academy does, how we can help you or your club, and if you are interested in getting involved, how you could help us. Before I do, please let me introduce my colleagues. Firstly, you've got to meet the visionary behind this initiative, Elizabeth Jordan, District 71 Club Growth Director. I'm gonna hand over to Elizabeth now to explain her vision behind establishing the Growth Academy. The Growth Academy is all about harnessing excellence and expertise to drive strategic growth for District 71. Not only growth this year, but in years to come. This is especially important during our 50th year when we're looking to be a distinguished district. Before I introduce my other colleagues, a quick question. Why is it that some clubs have 50 to 100 members whilst other clubs struggle to recruit or retain just 20? These are some of the questions that we work hard Hard to find the answers to here at the Growth Academy. What are the tips, tactics and strategies that the best clubs, that the most successful clubs are using to grow and maintain strong membership numbers? Our mission here is to support new and existing clubs, not just to survive, but to excel. And as Elizabeth mentioned, with 2022 being the district's 50th anniversary, we are particularly keen to support clubs in this challenging year. Now I'm going to confess most of the heavy lifting is actually done by my colleagues, Maria, Sue and Steve. I'm going to hand over to Maria Orlovic now, who heads up the new clubs initiative to explain what it is she does. My role in the Growth Academy relates to championing and facilitating the building of new clubs. I follow up on new leads and existing new club initiatives which come forward. Some of these initial relationships may include setting up the team that supports the club building. Our goal is to build both successful and sustainable new Toastmasters clubs. We focus district-wide on what drives new clubs, what the blockers to chartership are and how to solve them. We champion new club building and the learning of how to do this. We provide regular touch points and support every step as required, even with all those charter paperwork forms. Next we have Sue, who is our Club Quality and Sustainability Chair. Over to you, Sue. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Burnett, Growth Academy Club Quality and Sustainability Chair. 
In this role, I am responsible for helping our clubs in D71 to achieve quality standards and sustainability. This is done in a variety of different methods. So, for example, the video series with tips and tricks on how to support clubs in achieving excellence and sustainability. And we're also looking at providing a Q&A session on a regular basis to help our clubs have the support they need and the resources to help them achieve quality standards and sustainability. Now, working quietly in the background, but with an absolutely critical role, is my colleague Steve Campion, who looks after admin and processes. Amongst the many things that Steve has been doing this year, one of them is to streamline the process for chartering a club. Now, in addition to the work of my colleagues, we've been extremely fortunate to have the support of some really remarkable people. For example, Lance Miller, former world champion of public speaking and a passionate advocate for club growth. Lance has been instrumental in the turning around of a number of clubs over the years and he brings a huge amount of expertise to this particular topic. We also had Peter Rees who is the UK's leading expert in marketing of charities and non-profit organisations. He delivered a masterclass on this topic and it was extremely well received. These are just some of the initiatives that we have run here at the Growth Academy. If you'd like to get involved, if you have some expertise or some insight on how your club has succeeded, please get in touch with us. We would love to learn more and we would love to share this information out amongst all of the clubs in the district to try to support their growth. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. So there you go, guys. Um, and um, without further ado, I'll hand over to the lady of the moment, Elizabeth Jordan. Over to you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Kevin. And I have to say, when you watch the video on your phone or, or your laptop, it, com it's, it's, it comes across better than it does on Zoom. So Gavin's done a magnificent job. And thank you for really getting across what some of the work that the, the Growth Academy is doing. So what I'm going to do very quickly is to share with you some of the things we've been doing in the past six months and where we think we're headed. Okay, I think we're, we're good to go. So just to add to Gavin's welcome, Francesco and members of the DLT, you're very welcome to the um, Growth Academy. This is our agenda, which you've gone through, which I think you've all had. What we should, what I forgot to say, Gavin, we forgot to say is the person want to thank the, the, the Growth Academy Zoom team who are with us tonight. We have um, Geroid and we have um, Nick and they support us in our quest for excellence. So as, as we said, what is this goal? What is this Growth Academy? It's a big, bold idea we have to, to be a catalyst for growth in District 71. And we, we're basing this on very, I would say well-proven concepts and practice is all around harnessing the expertise, the experience and excellence, as I said, to catalyze growth. And why, the reason we're doing it this way is that we believe we, and not only do we believe, we're seeing ourselves getting synergy from working together. So what have we been doing in the last six months? As Gavin quite rightly said, the core team was set up. He's the chair of the Growth Academy. There's myself, the club growth director, um, Steve, um, Maria and um, Sue. And what we've been doing, can, can, I believe can be fit into sort of three um, boxes. We are all, if you look at the right hand side of the arrow, we, we dry, what we're looking to do, we're really looking to underpin the district mission, which is about growing new clubs and helping existing clubs thrive and be in excellence. So a thriving, distinguished District 77, 7, District 71 through growth is where we are headed. And the way we do that, several ways of doing that. The first one, of course, is the strategic planning. And this has been done in several ways. There's a contribution to the district success plan. There's the uh, marketing plan that has come from all the work that Peter has done with us. He's brought some really new ideas about how to do marketing. And then I think as a growth academy, an overlay on that is having this vision, what we call Vision 2024, in which the, um, the 
Toast Masters would be 100 years old. And one of the things we're looking at is how can we build 100 new clubs? Start now, so that this is three years out. So this year, we're looking at building 20 new clubs. It's a stretch, it may not happen, but this is what we are putting heart and soul into. In 2023, we go for 30 clubs. And by 2024, we go for 50 clubs. By that time, all the hard work we're putting in should start to come to, to help deliver greater growth. We're building, and the way we're doing it is, um, we're looking at some big, bold things like doing a regional campaign. We discussed with a consultant this morning. We're also tapping into the Moonlit project that obviously Francesco, I think he, he, he led that. And also working, we've got a couple of ideas to work with external consultants. It's about building capability. We've got a very capable core team. I mean, Gavin, he didn't say that, but he's an entrepreneur, well-known um, podcaster, podcaster's number one in Ireland, very um, effective leader and highly respected. So it's no, no mistake at all that he is leading the team. We've got We've gone, we want to be agile. We don't just want to use the word, we want to be agile. And, and, and certainly Steve in, later on will tell you about some of the productivity tools he's introduced to make, us, um, to make us more agile. And he's demonstrated this because he has built the first new club in District 71. And that has happened because of not only his expertise, but his agility. We also, and Sue will talk about this, the tools we've been doing for clubs, Every week we're giving them tools and tips. And then we're trying to, to put effective coaches and mentors in. We're not just filling spaces because people want to get a DTM. We're trying to put people in who are going to make a difference and help to drive sustainable um, growth and sustainable um, recovery in the clubs. I think one major thing we're doing is upskilling. And we, we've deliberately gone for masterclasses by people who will come and help us, help our thinking, help us to be thought leaders, but also help to make a difference to the people who come. And Peter was one such person. He came and gave us a new way of looking at doing a marketing plan. He came, did two sessions for us. And, and as I said, I, this has been absolutely um, fantastic what he has done. Lance Miller, I'm very grateful to. He came twice and he, he, he said he thinks what we're doing as a growth academy is a brilliant idea. And he also said he's happy to come back anytime we want, we want him to help us. And I think that is absolutely amazing to get that level of commitment from someone who's so busy and someone who's, who, who wants to help us. Chrissy Oblonsky came to do um, PR. And of course, Elizabeth Nostet did a couple of sessions on coaching for coaches, mentors and sponsors. So that's just very briefly to compliment what's on the video. I'm going to stop sharing and then move on because unfortunately I couldn't see the clock. So I don't know if I've got my five minutes or not, but um, I, I'm going to stop there because we've now seen the video and I've told you about some of the things we want to do. So I don't know, Francesco, at this point, if you or anyone else has a, has, has a question very, very quickly before we move on to, I think um, Maria is next on the agenda. Was there anything you wanted to ask or, should, or do you want to leave questions to the end? Oh, oh, that's fine. Okay. So, um, Gavin, you're the chair. So back to you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the next person on the agenda. Well, Thank you very much, Elizabeth. We'll hand over to Maria now. Um, Maria, um, you have seven minutes. Thank you. I'll put my stopwatch on because I do want to speak now. I came into this role around October. I've um, not been involved with growing clubs, but Elizabeth knew me from um, coming along to uh, meetings in the district leadership and like some of the ideas. I've had really good learning on this. What I do is when I find out why they've, they've asked for information or what they want to do about a club, it's my connection, can you hear me? Sorry, it says my connection's not stable, so I don't know if you can hear me. Um, You're coming in, Maria. Okay, thank you. So in some cases, and what I'm trying to do is rehash currently the list of best clubs to go visit online. We get people that come to us that don't know anything about Toastmasters. So first of all, we send them around, give them a real good taste of Toastmasters, whether they're for a corporate or whether they're in an area that just 
There is no finder club. So we're connecting people. I've even found one where she's off to a couple of meetings tonight. She's got some options. She's in an area that I found another area director has some people that live in this area. So that's a potential. Uh, some of the people that talked about clubs on Sunday, uh, if you went to the meeting with the division directors, a lot of them I knew about, a couple I didn't. I spoke to some, I've got three potential leads at the moment. We've got a second meeting next week on those. One of them had a fantastic idea of his uh, area or uh, with the division with some area directors as well, had an idea that could be replicated, which is another reason this is really good district wide, because his idea was we have a lot of people, we've gone back to face to face, we've got a lot of people that want to stay in our, in our area or, or a division or our region who want to be members of a new club. So they're considering taking those online people and scooping them up. Now that's something that might be replicated in areas with high membership, uh, or we can bring them on to the online clubs that might be struggling depending on what their needs and wants are. So there's some things to think about that. We've found people that have just come across there that we've connected with division directors and found a team or Elizabeth generally nominates experts who've built clubs before and we get involved in the meetings and keep it running and get together to do a launch. At the moment, I had a big launch for next week. It was definitely going to happen. There were 20 plus people definitely interested in joining. Unfortunately, COVID has really pushed things back with some of the launches that we were expecting and charterships in the last couple of months. And all the people in the business sector are just so busy trying to deal with all the supply chain issues and restructuring their strategies. I've attended meetings with Elizabeth and on my own, but generally she'll get involved definitely with um, some of the end, perhaps second meeting after I speak to people where I've, we've taught, we've learnt about a company strategy so that we're able to come along and actually talk about what Toastmasters can do for them, understanding what drives their company. And then I will also speak to those that just haven't been able to charge it because they haven't got their membership up. I've actually found that some of our mentors um, that are building clubs, regardless of their experience, might not even understand the basics of branding and social media. So there's some upskilling there. So my experience with clubs and in those roles and talking to people has actually been um, good and coming to all these other meetings. Bring things to the Growth Academy as well, uh, issues, but also some of the, the good points uh, we and, and anybody who wants to build a club, we, we'll also connect them with a similar club and get them to talk to some of those people. So we're going across the the, um, the the district has been very, very useful because I'm learning and capturing that information and bringing it along. We're going to regular meetings and sometimes there's, there's 20 connections you're juggling, which can be quite difficult, but at the same time, We've got the agenda for a launch. We know what's worked. We know what feedback people come with. We know things are different, but we also know some of the things that are the same. And they, that I had a person yesterday that wanted to set up in a new location because they wanted another town to grow. So busy thinking about a Toastmaster name, a division director, but wasn't actually thinking about that name in that town. Are you really gonna set up there? Have you done your research? So, for example, I've looked at populations and mapped them across to where our clubs are, where we could grow geographically, and, and, and taking that to people saying, what do you think? Do we have a team that could support that? And, and looked at their blockers, understood which mentors might think that it takes two years to grow a club, but haven't looked at other ways of doing it. Gone into organisations and said, how do you communicate with people that might be a potential Toastmaster member in your clubs? Who's your audience? Have you brought your leaders into a meeting? Have you asked that they're evaluated? Have you made this part of your business culture? So they might communicate on Microsoft Teams, but they never thought of setting up a Teams chat to talk about the Toastmasters group. And I, they thought, that's a great idea. But some of the real basics, because we, we, we have a corporate background, Elizabeth and I, but so, so do a lot of the growth academy or their own businesses. And it's really bringing in those ideas and saying, have you tried it this way? And then some of the things that we're struggling with is just getting people with a membership up high enough to charter, even if they've been going for a while, some of which we've inherited. 
And all of this, I think, has been really interesting. What I'd like to do also is, because I'm repeating myself and realise how little people understand about building clubs, I went and read the manuals. That's what you do when you take any Toastmaster roles, but there's a lot missing out of the manuals that's experience. And I'm thinking of doing a video for that, just to say hello um, and telling them what the basics are. Maybe I'll get somebody else to speak or write a script because I'm new to videos. But I want to get down to members. I want to know where people work. I want to know, can we bring a Toastmaster club? I spoke to one of the people yesterday who has another Toastmaster in an organisation. They put Toastmasters in their SharePoint. They may have a future club out of that. So we need to find out what members do. do the, are they part of a, a, a special interest group and understand what Toastmasters can do for them? Because I always said to my, in my club, Toastmasters changes lives. Think about how you've been inspired. Think about how your thinking's changed. Think about what you've given in evaluation and what you've given serving on committees, et cetera. You can do that for someone else. And that's, the, that's what I want to take down to members because I think they can help us build clubs. Thanks, Maria. Thank you for that. Um, and so I'm just looking at the agenda here and I can see that we have uh, Sue up next. So Sue, good to see you. Um, you joined there while we were in the middle of the video. So over to you. Thank you, Kevin. And um, oh gosh, I can't see everybody because I'm on my phone. So I do apologize and I have no, no presentation, <laughs> which is not great for a Toastmaster. But what I can do is share with you some of the experiences I've had so far. Um, video, yes, I agree that video is a great way to connect with people. And I guess this is something that is missing from our Toastmasters promotions when we when we promote and we try to reach out to people because if we can be more connected then people will come in a lot faster but how many of our clubs actually use video as a way of connecting so I'm just going to ask that as a question and let you think on that subject but perhaps that sparked an idea <laughs> this is what I like about this club uh, um, being involved in this, this environment because it does spark great ideas. And if we were to help our clubs be confident of communicating on video, I'm sure they could reach out and reach their audiences much faster than other methods of communication. I know that is a fact. So that's something I need to look at how we can develop further. But going back to the videos that we've been producing, I know they've been well received and I hope that we can do more content like that to help our members benefit from the quality of experience that we've got within our organisation. And I know that I bring a lot to the table in terms of club quality, being part of a quality club that has gone through a phase of challenge and all our clubs are faced with these challenges. They, they, they become a chartered club and then they have a decline and then they go back up again, but it takes work to build it back up. Um, so the ideas behind having some Q and A sessions is to help troubleshoot with our clubs to help them understand how they can move forwards from those situations and it is possible and I speak from my own experiences of being in a club where you've got the cycle of it it becomes a strong club and then it dives down and then you can pick it back up again and I know that my home club is on the way back up and that's definitely happening in front of my eyes and going back to Maria's question on corporate clubs. I know the club that Steve, I have been involved in the process of chartering the club as of Toastmasters in Travis. I'm quite proud of that. And another experience that I've had just recently is 
with an advanced club that's also had a nose dive eat advanced toastmasters club and they came to me and said we need help and they just had an amazing event on monday night where they had almost 50 attendees to their meeting as a result of the connection which i thought was phenomenal because oh. i can remember having a conversation with the committee saying how how they had not been attracting big audiences and she said sue how can we do this and i said well if you do what i ask you to do and share that your event with the people that you need to share it with then you are guaranteed to get an audience so what I'd now like to see happen is that audience to be converted into members. That's the next step. If they're not converting that audience into members, that's a big problem that we need to solve. And I'm sure together as a team, we can look at these big challenges, how we can help clubs um, close the gaps in converting guests into members. Now, I haven't timed my video today, so... <laughs> I am hope I'm in time. I'm going to hand you back to Gavin now so you can think on those big questions and we can perhaps come back together as a team to explore them in more detail. Thanks very much, Sue. Um, thanks for that. I'm going to now hand over to Steve, Steve Campion. Um, Steve. Thank you, Gavin, and uh, good evening, everyone. It's a delight to be here with everyone this evening. The the role that I've been doing, as Gavin said earlier, is a lot more behind the scenes. As we've seen, there are so many ideas, so many initiatives, so many things for us to do that we could do, want to do. And what we really want to be able to do as a growth academy is build build something based on all that knowledge, based on all that insight that, for example, Maria has been getting by talking to various clubs or potential clubs that Sue has been getting from talking to potential coaches, talking to clubs that need help, offering help and, and, and providing that. And really seeing how can we condense that down into specific activities, specific initiatives that we within the Growth Academy core team can support and that we can do that we can use to build foundations, build assets, build information that is then useful to other groups and other teams to be able to uh, pr proceed with Toastmasters growth. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you, like real time, show you all three specific things that behind the scenes I've been working on. And I will, I think many of you all know, unfortunately I've had a bit of a little bit of a break from Toastmasters. I'm starting to come a little bit back, um, but the, uh, the, I can show you where we're up to and what we've been learning over the past six months and how that's going to be helpful for the foundation for the future. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. I'll share my screen. What I'm sharing here is an application called Todoist, which I know Daniel, you and I have spoken very, very briefly about. But this is a basically an online task tracking tool. And we are using this within the Growth Academy to track three things, to track new clubs, to track the work that we're doing around sustainable clubs, coaching and growth within clubs, and also the activities of the core team ourselves, what we're doing, how we're doing it, and, and how we coordinate that amongst ourselves. What you can see here in the new clubs project, for example, is a little card for each of the new clubs that we are talking to, potentially talking to. And Maria's been obviously taking the lead in populating this and keeping this information updated. What we can see here and how this is useful to the whole team is it means every time we have a weekly team meeting, we don't need to talk about every single club, every single prospect, everything that's going on, because we can highlight, we can share amongst ourselves what's happening, what needs to be done and who needs to do it. So, for example, Zurich Insurance, if I look at this one here, we've got the name, some comments about what's going on. We can add some comments that we you know, the meeting notes from after a meeting, and we can create tasks and subtasks about things that members of the Growth Academy are doing and need to do in order to take this prospect to the next stage. So here we can see 
tasks like providing an agenda, planning a date. And we can see here the dates that we were doing things and planning to do things. The fact that they've been crossed out means that we have actually done them. And so how this tool helps us is from a new club's perspective, we can keep everything related to that new club in one place. We can see where they are in the process. So we can see here, these clubs are at the demo and launch stage. These clubs, we're going through the charter process. This is a club that has chartered. So we need to plan celebration and ongoing support for that club. Any questions on that that I'm just showing there? No? Then related to this, the other thing, and, and please do um, um, unmute yourself because I might not be able to actually see you. The, we, the other project we've got is for the core team. These are the activities or initiatives that we're doing or thinking of doing. For example, the ideas of creating an online curriculum for coaches. We know that there is a, a Toastmasters standard training program for coaches, but new coaches are and should be coming along all the time. What we were thinking is doing little bite-sized learning uh, opportunities, learning videos, learning things for club coaches and potential club coaches so they can learn more about it. So what we can see here is these are activities that we are, that we've been thinking about, that we're planning or intend to do, uh, activities that are in progress. For example, Sue already mentioned, um, we've got the weekly growth academy emails going out. And then two initiatives that we've got in progress at the moment are the overall new club process, how do we describe this? So how do we want to describe this within our district? And then based on that, fleshing that out into an actual playbook. So if I switch into the new club process map, this is coming out of all the things that we've been learning, the successes from other people so far, and really starting to identify out the key stages in what it takes to create a new sustainable club going through the stages of discovery, you know, identifying a potential lead, identifying a potential prospect, engaging. And one of the things that was talked about earlier was talking to people who may be interested in starting a club and helping them understand what are the benefits? How does that fit with what they are personally trying to achieve? Or if it's an organizational club, what their organization is seeking to achieve. Moving on to the actual practical of building, holding launch meetings, signing up members, going through the process of actually becoming the chartered club and the initial meetings. So Sue and uh, Elizabeth mentioned earlier, our, our newly chartered club called First Masters in Travel. It's kind of at this stage at the moment. We've gone through charter, they're having their first meetings, and then we move to a support stage. And for each of these, what we've done is started to list out what each of these stages mean. So the discovery stage is what are the tasks, what are the things that people within the district and people within the Growth Academy will need to do in order to achieve all the tasks within that stage and move to the next stage. So within discovery, we're talking to people about the potential opportunities. And the results of this is that we have a lead, we have the contact details, we know why they're interested. And the idea is we'll start to build these processes out so that they don't need to be done by individual members of the Growth Academy. The idea is that we build this knowledge, skill, and capability within the district that our division directors, our area directors, and other people interested in starting clubs can do this. We then gauge what are the specific tasks that we want to go through. And at this stage, leading to application to organize, identifying potential club sponsors. I'll not talk through all this in detail. I just want to give a high level view here. Once we've got that level of engagement, we work on building, generating excitement, signing up the members, getting to charter strength and planning the first two meetings. After that is when we complete the charter process. So once we've got to the charter strength, we've planned the first couple of meetings, we know what's going to be happening. We then have the, the meeting to adopt the constitution, to elect our officers. We do all the charter paperwork and start working on things like a club success plan. Then the results of this is a few weeks later, several members have completed speeches, people are enrolled in pathways, we've had celebrations, we've got a plan, and we then move to a support phase. 
where people are achieving goals in the DCP. And actually, I would say that the support phase of a new club should last and extend beyond the election of the new officers for that club. Because it's one thing to have one set of officers come in and be enthusiastic. I think it's another thing to make sure that they are really uh, set up for success with their long-term sustainability. And so this is where we're looking for net growth in membership after charter, and that they've had their elections successfully completed. Then based on this, and I'll stop talking in just a moment, but based on this, we then started to build out a club playbook. So based on these stages, this is where we're starting to build out the specific tasks, the details, um, things like at, at the engagement level, schedule an introductory call with the new club contact and it should, who it should include, what should be provided in advance. The idea behind the playbook, which is definitely work in progress, we're going to continue to build on, is going down into the detail like when we have those introductory calls, what are the things that we're going to be finding out? What are the things we're going to be talking about and what needs to happen next? So I've just talked quite a lot. Um, I'm going to stop. Any questions or comments? And if not, I will hand back to Gavin. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. No questions, it seems. OK, um, well, look, I think that gives you a, a general view. I am going to hand over now to our sort of honored guest, Francesco. Um, so the, the subject that uh, Elizabeth uh, gently gave me is growth in challenging times. So what I thought I would share with you is some uh, suggested uh, guerrilla marketing uh, strategies uh, that I would like to test with you guys to understand if they can be used in your district uh, and if they make sense. So the first one is called Be Visible. I don't know, Elizabeth, uh, rather than me trying to share my screen, can you uh, maybe show the, the picture that I sent you earlier by WhatsApp? <clears throat> the idea is, is very simple. Uh, all these guerrilla marketing techniques are uh, meant to be very simple things that our BPPRs in the club can do with minimum training and that ideally require a very list. First one, be visible, is uh, geared towards making the clubs visible. And the first part is getting, so Google My Business is a free service from Google that allows local businesses to be visible in the internet and the process of actually creating a, a listing on Google My uh, Business uh, uh, will be very, very simple. Uh, uh, Paula Perina, which is the PRM in District uh, 109 as uh, created uh, uh, a workshop around this, and uh, I have uh, uh, created uh, uh, a one-pager, uh, some detailed instructions uh, uh, which are shared uh, in a link on the Toastmaster Europe uh, uh, page. So the idea is if a club can get on Google My Business, uh, it will be visible when people do a local search for maybe public speaking in uh, uh, Dublin. And they will appear as one of the businesses offering that kind of service. Because in the end, we can think of ourselves as a business or a small business offering our service. Along with that comes uh, a good opportunity to get contacts, to get out of this little investment in time. 
also it's an investment that stays there and if people take care of it and publish reviews and maybe update photos uh, it can be built over time and in the few tests that we have made we were getting at least 1000 contacts uh, uh, per month uh, with some of those becoming the second part of be visible is to make sure that the clubs have updated uh, their contact details on uh, club central in on club central and go to the option for uh, contact details and make sure that the email that is there is up to date quite often we've seen that uh, those emails are out of date and the uh, leads that are generated from the toastmaster website sometimes go to people who are not even anymore in the club and the uh, the last step in this uh, strategy is to automate answering those leads because again quite often the leads come in but nobody has the time to answer them so the idea is to create uh, an automation that will send out uh, at least some details about the clubs uh, when it meets where it meets and that kind of information uh, uh, automatically so that the person uh, trying to contact the clubs get an immediate answer now you would be surprised how many clubs are not easy to reach or simply do not reply to the request to visit them. And we'd like to do something uh, about this. Well, that's the first thing that I would like to propose you and if possible, support you in actually making it a uh, reality. I know that uh, Paula Perina is doing a, a workshop uh, tomorrow and one on Saturday on this subject, and I will be happy to share later the links to those workshops if you'd like to follow them. Along those lines, there are three more ideas I would like to share. And again, feel free to say, Francesco, this does not work here and they may look as a bit out of the box but that's the idea let's try to do something different so the first one is a coming soon uh, exercise so along with these lines of creating uh, uh, putting clubs on google my business the idea is to create fictional clubs clubs that do not exist in areas uh, that do not yet exist only with the objective of seeing if we can get uh, leads if you if we can get people who would be interested in having the toastmaster format in their own city of course we would be transparent saying this is a club in uh, creation it will come in the future it's not yet there but hopefully if we've get in enough interest uh, then we can support the creation of a new club another crazy idea uh, is to have a startup weekend for club uh, for toastmaster club creation so this is more geared toward those people who are interested in starting a club and it's a concentrated weekend of training offered by people who have experience uh, in starting a club or coaching a club uh, back to full strength it's a concentrated effort uh, to train people on this subject and the final thing that i uh, would like to suggest is the use of moonlit material but in a, in an easy way 
because I've realized uh, after talking with uh, people around that there is a lot of material we developed in Moonlit and sometimes it's not easy to use. So I'm proposing a one, two, three approach for clubs who want to get started in doing a marketing campaign. The one, two, three approach would be one, choose a target between uh, the ones that we have already identified. Second, download the corresponding uh, marketing plan, which is ready. And the third step is, of course, execute that. The marketing plan, once you've selected the, the, uh, the target and the length of the, of the marketing campaign you want to run as day by day, a post to make on Facebook or Instagram with a picture to go with it and with text ready to use or personalize in as much as wanted. So an easy way to get clubs in using uh, uh, the, the Moonlit material. So these are my four crazy suggestions. Uh, I don't know if uh, and which of these you think can be actually made into a reality, but I would be keen to understand this and hopefully try to give a support uh, towards reaching the, the goal that uh, I know District 71 has. And with that, I will close my mic because the noise here is getting very high. Thank you so much, Francesca. That was really interesting. Very, I don't think any of them would not be something that we could try at least here. Um, I, I actually, when you were saying them, it actually occurred to me that a lot of this is the kind of entrepreneurial tactics that we would take to generate business leads in our business. And, um, and so it's it's interesting to see you applying that to the Toastmasters. We would do the thing you were saying about the fictional clubs. We create dummy adverts in order to generate leads for potential locations where we want to rent property. And you, it's a good way to discover whether people are in that area looking for that particular type of thing. And it's exactly the same approach. So really interesting. Yeah, I think... Um, we should all be looking at these as um, we should be sharing as the Growth Academy, as I mentioned in the video, the whole idea of the Growth Academy is to kind of collect these kind of strategies and tactics and then share them out with the entire district so that people will start to apply these kind of things and start to generate more business. So, um, Elizabeth, I see you have a raised hand. I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, yes, I just want to say thanks, Francisco. I, I love the ideas. I agree with Gavin. They're very sort of like new and exciting and go for. The one I one that immediately appealed to me was the, the startup weekend, because I do like those concentrated efforts of people, you know, together doing ideation. And that always appeals to me. And I think that's something we could possibly, you know, try to do quite easily. The Moonlit Project, I'm aware of, I've been to lots of your presentations, I've looked at some of the, 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 the photographs and the plans and so on. I think that needs a bit more concentrated effort, I think, on our parts. But um, definitely, I agree with Gavin, I think the, the Growth Academy reasonably exists is to be a hub of ideas. So I think, and then share that with different clubs and, and help them. So I'm definitely a fan of those four ideas and thank you uh, for sharing them with us. Yeah, I'll absolutely um, mirror those comments, Elizabeth, about the start of weekend. That's something that we actually see here in Dublin quite a lot, but it's in the tech sector. And so you'll have a lot of startups and they will come together on a Friday and they'll meet, they'll meet different startup founders. And that's on a Friday evening and they'll work 48 hours on the trot and then on Monday morning, there's a company in place and it's actually now in business. And there's no reason why we can't use that kind of approach to actually bringing Toastmasters uh, wannabe um, members together and say, here's a load of people that want to be a Toastmaster. Let's get the, the area together and let's just generate a couple of clubs and 
come Monday morning, bang, you've got yourself a couple of new clubs in the uh, in the area. Great, great ideas, Francesca. Um, thank you very much for those. And uh, it's some great food for thought. I, I don't know, Daniel, you're here. Would you would you like to kind of say a few words? Yes, I think um, when I was going through what you uh, mentioned, Francesco, I, I did like uh, how to make your club visible because there's various tips and tricks in there that um, are very important. And, and club visibility from, from Toastmasters International Find a Club is, is one of the crucial things. And as you say, previous marketing by Toastmasters International has found like something like of all the leads they generated for clubs, 70% of those leads were never reciprocated by the clubs in question because the contact details were out of date or the clubs were just too insular to believe that anyone else out there ever existed and didn't pick up on it, um, which is quite sad, really. I've often encouraged area directors, don't contact clubs via the contact details you've obtained um, privately. Contact them as if you were a member of the general public, explore what you can find out about them and see if you can honestly contact them and they get back to you. And if they don't, that's something you can discuss in your visit report. And so that I think uh, is very useful. I love the idea really as well of um, using Google My Business to plant seed club concepts out wherever we think we've got a population basis that may may warrant it. I think I think that's a really lovely idea because we can start to use the expressions of interest there to shape our expectations of a possible market. That sounded really good. And um, a lot of people have mentioned the idea of a startup weekend, an incubator weekend. I think I, I think the potential is there. Uh, I, I think you've got to pick your way through complex compact diaries and zoom fatigue to get there but i think the potential is there to do that one um and you just need to make sure that you get the right people in the room to, to make it happen so it's, it's a good stuff then a good way of looking at this differently um from the the kind of the the, the typical narratives that we have i think maria wants to chip in there yes maria oh we Every time I hear an idea, I ask a question. Sorry about that. And I would have asked this of, of Elizabeth in one of our one-to-ones. I know there's a database of companies so that we are able to approach them here if we know they've got a Toastmasters club in another part of the world. But the other thing, the more I see people come up with interesting ideas for clubs, and I, you know, I can showcase quite a few that we've heard, whether they're, they're um, hobbies or whatever else. When I go looking for, and I'm sorry, I didn't ask you this, Elizabeth, because it's just come up, but if I go looking for a club and I go on find a club, um, I then have to click on there and guess if they're open or closed or however they're coded. What would be really good is if every club around the world had just a sentence or something to say who their target audience is community club for the area of blah, 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 online, or, um, op, you know, online club to the whole world for people interested in writing skills or, or people interested in golf or something like that. Because I think we could also replicate and so go out to members and say, this, is got, this club exists in America and we find people that are actually interested in it and maybe do a survey in a club officer training and say, would you be interested? But what it also does is it sparks ideas on what they can do. So this is one of the reasons I'd like to go into get find out what members do because we want sustainable corporate clubs. So it's good to have a very experienced Toastmaster coming in and being part of that club and not just having a new club. Um, with people that you need to upskill and with their mentors, but somebody that actually understands the business as well. But likewise, do we have somewhere that has every special interest club, you know, whether it's a sport, whether it's a sewing group, whether it's whatever. And it lets people think, actually, I never thought of that. That would make a really good club and I'd like to be involved with that. Um, but that's just a question idea. Anyway. I'll leave it with you. Thanks, Maria. 
you know, to be sustainable, it does help if we've got some, some existing Toastmasters that understand Toastmasters and really have a passion for that special interest club. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, we're approaching the uh, 7 p.m. mark and we try to keep things uh, punctual and on time. So uh, I think I'm going to call the meeting to an end just to thank our Zoom masters, um, Geroyd and Nick, and also to thank just uh, Francesca for your time, Daniel for dropping in, and Eileen and uh, Arnold and a few, every, anyone else, and, and Brenda, of course. Guys, it's uh, you're all more than welcome to join us again. And uh, it's all just, we're here to try to help each other, I guess. So uh, look forward to um, hearing from any of you in the, in the near future. With that, I shall close the meeting. <laughs>